Hey, okay, this uh, this video is for Brian Kennedy. You commented, um, you commented on my uh, bucking special video. Uh, thank you for that, by the way. So I, I don't really feel like I answered your question very well um, about why I like the bucking special or kind of what I'm looking for in an axe or what's practical for you know somebody uh, in the market for an axe. So I'll try to do a little bit better here. Um, so what I typically look for, here's a few that I run on a regular basis, but what I would be looking for more than a brand or even the price is fitmanship here. And again, I'm not an expert at all here. These are just things I picked up and learned along the way. So I hung this head. So fitmanship here, really good fit there. Um, and does the handle feel good to you? You know, what's the length? A lot of this just comes from running an axe a lot. You kind of learn what you like and what you don't. Everybody's different. Um, I like them a little bit proud. Um, and I like to see that swell on the top there. Um, no, no, yeah, there we go. You can kind of see that. Um, how the wood kind of swells out there. Um, it kind of makes me feel good to know that that I've got that, that swell there. And then I put two wedges in this one, uh, single seated. I didn't double them up or anything like that. And then I've got my Harbor Freight Special here. It's like a $40 ax that I've just abused to no end. I gotta say it's held up pretty good. It's heavy, it's a four pound head, a terrible head. Uh, it gets hung up when you're splitting really bad. It's super dull. Um, I let my ground guys kind of, well, one. One's a, one can run an ax really well, but I've got a new guy that He's just sort of learning, so you can see we've got some overswing going there. I'll have to spoke shave that down. I've actually taken a lot out of the handle too. Uh, it was even fatter than this, but um, it's fairly indestructible. But you know, I've got some work to do there. It's just a huge chunk of wood there. So, uh, it's a it's pretty rough, but if you just need a knock around axe or whatever, again, this was one of maybe ten in there though that I found that was decent. So. Decent, decent fitmanship. I did a little bit of work there as well. It's hard to find an axe off the shelf that's going to do what you need it to do. And then the grain orientation here is not bad either. Um, I like to have my grain orientation going with the swing of the axe. Like here's a good example. Let that focus up. So I don't know if you can see that grain pattern. Kind of tough to see. But running with the swing of your axe. So this way with the swing of your axe. Uh, there's some debate on that. And so again, I'm not an expert there. Um, this was an Echo, Echo USA. Uh, they contracted somebody to make these and I don't know who. If anyone knows that branding mark, let me know because they built a really good axe. Again, a little bit proud, good swell there. Really good fit. And a really nice, well-balanced axe. Um, you can see kind of where she balances out. Uh, if I can get this one-handed, give me a minute. Uh, we're close right there. You can see relatively, relatively balanced right there. So a really nice little axe, a little 28-inch, uh, two-pound head. So great camp axe. Um, this is the bucking special that I had in the video. Um, I think I, I said three pound, it might actually be a three and a half pound head. Uh, she's a little tank with a 28 inch handle. Lots of meat there, pretty fat handle. You can see right there. I've got pretty decent sized hands. Um, and a pretty fat head on it uh, to seat those wedges really good. And then here's a smaller bucking special that I had made too that I actually broke. It was not made for hitting wedges and I, I did it anyway, but I overswung actually. You can see right there. Hey, yeah, the sun's coming out, it's perfect. Right here, I hit a hard head wedge, so a steel backed wedge and took a chunk out of this thing. I hit it hard too. I was overswinging for another another wedge and I hit that one. And so, um, not what this one was designed for so much, a little two pound head. Again, would have been great for um, a little camp ax. Um, if you thin the handle, it may be even a little a wood carving axe. Maybe, I don't know. But anyway, I hope that helps, man. I hope I didn't waste uh, too much of my breath or your time going over these. But just a few that I run. So these are going to range from 
uh, I don't really remember what I spent on a bucking special, to be honest with you. I bought a few of them at once, so you'd have to contact, you know, Buck and Billy Ray for that. And then, but the, these aren't expensive axes. This little Echo is great. Like I said, 60 bucks maybe. Um, dirt cheap here. This at one time was probably a really good good axe. This is a, was a Kelly Works uh, True Temper um, a WC Kelly Perfect axe, which I don't think they're the same company anymore. Anyway, I'm excited to get to put a little more time into that one. So, um, I hope that helps, man. I hope that answers the question a little bit better. Um, if not, let me know again. I'm not an expert. I can direct you to some guys that have a lot more knowledge in this field than I do. Um, I'm just an arborist and, and I really enjoy wood splitting. And so over that time, I've kind of learned what I like and what I don't and what works and what doesn't. So anyway, uh, have a good one.